everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're checking out a game controller from Razer today. This is called the Serval, and I received this through the Amazon Vine program recently. This will work with Android as well as PC and Mac, uh, but it will not work with iOS. So uh, iPads and, and iPhones and iPods aren't going to work with this, but Android, PC, and Mac will. You can connect via Bluetooth wirelessly, or you can plug in a USB cable into it and uh, connect up to the device with a cable if you maybe want to get a little less latency, although I didn't detect much latency on the Bluetooth thing. We'll check out uh, its game performance in a few minutes. Now, this is the exact same game controller that they pack in uh, with the Razer Forge TV, which is their Android TV game console that I thought was pretty much a dud. Um, but the controller actually had some hope, so we're going to look at this independently because you can buy this uh, as a standalone product. This is $79, though, so a very expensive uh, for a game controller, especially on the PC side, when you can get an Xbox One controller for almost half that price. Uh, there are some unique features to this, despite the fact that it kind of looks like a normal game controller, and that is the button travel. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. So by travel, I mean how far a button gets pushed down uh, before it registers. So the travel time on the uh, main buttons here, the action buttons, are is very, very small, and they've got mechanical switches on it also. So if you really want to rapid fire, push very quickly, uh, this will lend itself very well to that. But if you you're accustomed to the longer travel times that you might see on an Xbox controller with buttons that are a little bit squishier. You may not like this because this really is uh, very, very much a hairpin kind of trigger on it and it's mechanical. So it has a nice quality feel to it. You can hear it clicking there. It's really pretty nice. Uh, the, uh, the control sticks here both push down as well. A little bit stiffer than they feel like on the Xbox, but a little bit more precise too because of that. So I kind of like those. But I don't like the travel on the directional pad here. So this actually does have a lot of travel to it. And when I'm playing some of the retro games, it's really hard to uh, move my character around precisely because you are having a hard time. Once the one of these uh, arrow directional things is pushed in, it's hard to kind of get your thumb back over to the other direction because there is uh, some degree of time actually in milliseconds, of course, that it takes to just kind of get that uh, pushed down so it can register. So it's a little bit too much travel here and not enough travel here, I guess, for me. But maybe your preferences or gameplay might be different, especially if you're using sticks mostly. I think you might like this because it is a little bit more precise due to the stiffness. You have some Android controls here. So you have your back and home buttons here. Uh, you've got a power button for turning it on as well as some uh, buttons that you can map uh, specifically in certain games if you so choose. It is powered by AA batteries. Uh, you don't need the AA batteries when you are playing uh, with a uh, USB connection, but you will, of course, need it if you are going wireless. And like the Xbox controller, you get two analog triggers on both sides, as well as two buttons up top here. What's interesting is the travel time on these two switches uh, is a little bit more than it is on uh, the buttons here on the front. Now, they also give you in the box a little mount here for uh, plugging in a, uh, a phone to it. So you can mount this little uh, stand on here and then take out your Android phone and just kind of keep it in there too. So you can get like a, a portable gaming experience with your phone. So that's kind of a nice feature. So what we're going to do now is boot up a couple games on my Mac and on my phone and see how this performs. All right, I've got the game controller connected via Bluetooth to my LG G4 here. And as you can see, the latency doesn't seem to be all that bad, at least as far as uh, any detectable lag between uh, pushing the button and action happening on the screen. I am running a retro emulator here uh, playing Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, the issue I am running into, though, is the fact that the uh, travel time on this directional pad is so bad that uh, you really have to um, kind of push down pretty far to get Sonic to move in the direction that you want to go into. So it is a little bit of a lag in that sense, not so much in the uh, input delay, but just the uh, hardware design here kind of getting in the way of uh, enjoying this retro game. And now what we're going to do is check out a game that uses the control stick. So let's see how Bomb Squad works on here. We'll just resume my game here. I'm getting blown up as uh, things are happening. But here's the control stick. You can kind of see how that performs. Uh, but because they are kind of stiff, you get some really fine control on here. And I do kind of like uh, how the control sticks feel, certainly more so than uh, the uh, directional pad does. Uh, the buttons here are fine. And again, it's, you know, the travel time on the buttons is short, but if you have like a you know, real quick shooter kind of game, these uh, buttons will do very well for that. And the sticks here are also uh, very, very precise. All right, one last thing to try out here. We're going to disconnect my phone here from the uh, controller, or at least take off its little mounting bracket here. It is, it is a little, I'm a little concerned about the mounting bracket actually, because it doesn't feel like you can do this too many times before something is gonna snap off. It really secures in uh, quite well, and I'm not sure how long that's gonna last for. Now, when you plug in the USB cable, it will override the Bluetooth. So it'll disable the Bluetooth connection to whatever device that you have, uh, and then we'll connect up to the computer. So we've got my Mac running here 
uh, with Sonic the Hedgehog. I'll hit the start button here. As you can see, uh, we are now uh, playing the game here on the, uh, the Mac and everything seems to be working pretty well on there, although I don't play very well at all. <laughs> so, uh, but you can get a feel for, though for how things uh, are performing here. The Mac is being a little bit laggy this evening for some reason. So this is not the controller's issue, but the Mac is just acting up here. My little Mac needs to get refreshed. But again, with the USB cable plugged in, you can see uh, the latency here is pretty, uh, pretty decent on uh, the button pushes. And that would be expected because we do have a hardwired connection here. So that is the Razer Servo. Not a bad controller. It does have uh, some, some pretty nice hardware design, especially around the mechanical buttons here on the uh, front of the controller. Although the price is high, $80 for a game controller uh, is quite steep, especially for one that's kind of targeted towards mobile. It will work on uh, PCs and Macs as well, but uh, I, I feel like it should cost a little bit less than it does, uh, but it is pretty lightweight. And I think if you are someone who uses the control sticks a lot and needs a very uh, quick rapid fire kind of response, this controller will get you that. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. Thank you.